Hi everybody, Sarah here for your next edition of your virtual pottery class. Um, I'm, I'm posting today because we would normally have a Tuesday night pottery class. Um, so I'm going to throw something today um, that we were kind of working on in our Thursday class. So they were bottle shapes. I used, so this is one of the bottle shapes. Um, this is the Emily's purple and the kiwi on top. Um, and it, both of those glazes crawl alone, so when you put them together, they crawl pretty nicely together. And I like green and purple together. Anyways, oh yeah, there's that spot where it's kind of crawling. That's pretty cool. So you can have it just be a bottle shape for be a bud vase or something, or I was also using those shapes and then cutting out of them to make these little bird feeders. So I posted a picture earlier this week, or last week of a bird feeder where I have um, a washer on the inside at the end of a rope so that it hangs it like this, and then I'll put a dowel rod um, and glue it in there into that little cutout. And then it has some holes in the bottom just in case it gets you know, some moisture in there, but then you put the bird seed and you have the dowel rod kind of hanging out. So that's another thing that you can do with this shape, this bottle shape. Um, or you can fill, I mean, right now we're all stuck at home, so you could maybe you could make some toilet wine and, you know, fill up your bottle with that um, and enjoy that out of a nice, uh. nice bottle shape. I wonder how many of you guys have wheels at home or any kind of studio space at home. Pretty cool. Even if you are, even if you don't get a wheel and you just kind of have some space where you can mess with clay while while we're out. And if you have clay that you want to bring, uh, get from the studio, you can just email Chris or I, and one of us can head over there, um, and we can put it outside the door for you. Uh, we're not allowed to let the public into the building, and we're working from home right now, but we can run over there and put your clay outside if you just really want to get your hands dirty while we're out and make some because I'll make some hand building videos um, as well. I'm just centering my clay. I did a centering video earlier so if you need to get talked through, if you want to be talked through the centering process, you can watch that one. So I'm just going to get there. And then my opening, I use my middle finger. I prefer that to the thumbs or the fingers to palm or any of those other techniques for opening. I just like this better. I feel like I have a little more control, but it's very much a personal preference, whatever works for you, because I've, you know, I've had students that have tried my method and it doesn't work and then they try something else and it works for them. So. There's no wrong way to do it as long as you're opening and keeping it centered and, and even. So I'm just compressing the bottom here. I'm not going to open it too wide because I want my shape to be bulbous and kind of most of the volume be in the middle part. Or close to the bottom but not directly at the bottom because I also don't want to have to trim it. I don't have any chucks at home. So I won't, I could probably makeshift something to trim the bottom of a bottle on at home, but I'm going to try not to have to trim it. So I'm going to do a little bit of cutting at the end around the foot. So I've got it compressed. Now I'm going to slow down a little bit. And I would recommend slowing down after you get it centered before you open and, and do anything else. I just, I go fast because I forget to turn it down. So I'm pushing a little harder at the bottom because it's harder to get that clay off the bottom there. And if you notice, I'm keeping my thumbs together. Find some way to keep your hands in contact and kind of communicating and talking to each other and moving at the same pace. Otherwise you'll get spots where your walls are different thicknesses and that'll that'll cause you surprisingly that causes a lot of a lot of issues when you're throwing. I use a lot of water so I'm constantly every couple of pulls I'll go in and clean the water out just so it doesn't become too too much of a sloppy mess. And I'm actually gonna dig in a little harder even at the bottom because I want it to go in a little bit down there too. 
and then I'm pushing from the inside to get it to come out a little bit and then I'm going to kind of switch and push more from the outside. Now when you are making pieces that you want to have a narrow neck and kind of have that bottle shape, you need to keep your the neck of your piece as narrow as you can even while you're throwing it because the wider you get it, the harder it's going to be to bring it back in. And at some point, I will have the, I'll have the neck so narrow that I can't get my hand in there, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So I'm going to pull, it's still kind of thick, so I'm just going to give it some regular pulls. It looks more like a cylinder right now, but we're going to reshape it later once I thin it out a little bit. So I am going to try to belly it right now. And this is where there's a little bit of a dance that happens. So I'm pushing more where I want it to go out with my inside hand. And then I swap. And then, then I push a little bit more. So it's, it kind of I kind of do this. And then as I come up to where I want it to narrow back in, I kind of switch the pressure and the position of my fingers. breezy and kind of overcast today, which is nice because it has been very hot outside lately. And I work in my garage with the door open usually because I don't like all the clay dust and stuff to kind of hang out in here. So I open the garage door up. And when that sun is beaming down, our house faces west. So especially when it's getting later in the day and that sun beams down. Oh, it gets hot in here. Okay. So I think thickness-wise it's pretty good. I'm just cleaning out the inside again because there's a lot of water. So I think the thickness is good. Now what I'm going to do is... I have this thing on the jig. And I think we might have one studio version of this and then I think Chris has one um, but if you have your own or if you have any woodworking skills you can take like a wooden spatula or wooden spoon and you can turn it into something similar to this so these are good because you can get them in when your hand won't fit anymore or you can use the other I'll probably because I want a really skinny neck on my bottle so I'll probably use this other end, the other end too. So I'm just going to set that there. Alright, so those other bottle forms that I made were like fat, 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 and then they got thin really fast at the neck there. They kind of, or they gradually, but the, the neck was really short. I might make this one, leave this one with a longer a longer neck that's really skinny. So let me see if I can collar it in. I always kind of start with the rim when I'm trying to collar far and you know, get it to go from really open to really not. Or when I'm closing forms. Because the rim can get out of control if you squeeze too much underneath, it'll start to buckle. So I always go gradually, but I always try to get the rim where I want it to be first. And then I'll go down and fix the rest of it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna skinny it up faster. Than the other one, so I have a bit of a longer... Along the neck. So right now, I wish 
I could get down in there a little further, but I've closed that up so much that it's not really possible. So I'm going to pull from where I can get my, you know, as far down in there as I can, I'm going to pull because when you collar things back in, just like when you're bellying this part, if you, if you pull your walls too thin before you belly it, um, it could get extra thin here because when you're bellying it out, you're stretching that clay out as it comes out more here. Um, and then kind of the opposite happens when you collar it in. So when I collared the neck here, it got a little bit thicker, which is pretty cool and helpful, especially when you're trying to close a form because it gives you a little bit of extra that you can pull like this to give you enough to, to close it if you didn't have enough before. So it looks like my rim's gotten a little wacky, but I never, I don't, unless it's really out of control, I don't usually worry about it until the end because it's super easy to fix with that cheese cutter. So I'm just going to, I'm going to thin it out a little bit more and continue to, I should not have squeezed water inside because now I can't get the water out. So don't do what I just did. I'm going to continue to do some pulls on this and because this is such a long, narrow neck on such a bulbousy bottom. I think that I'm going to flare the rim out significantly so that it doesn't look so, so that the contrast in size isn't so great. Not so much. I'm just kind of, and I'll use my floppy red rib on this too to clean up the, the shape and the form and stuff and maybe my metal rib. I don't know. Metal ribs are scary. We all know that. Yeah, so I'm going to flare it out and it is kind of out of control up here so I'm going to grab the cheese cutter. I'm just going to kind of hold it where it cuts the uneven part off. Now sometimes if you don't cut enough off with the cheese cutter, um, it'll, these little buggies, it'll just stick right back on. So you want to be able to cut enough off that it'll peel off and not just stick right back onto it. So that looks a little bit better. I think, I think I'm happy with the shape, with the form. Now, if you wanted this to be a, uh, like a, maybe not a sake bottle, but something that poured a little bit better, I would not, I would make your rim have a little bit of a spout or um, give it a sharpness so that it cuts the liquid even when you pour it, but I actually do not like sake at all. And I think this would be kind of hard to clean if I were to put sangria or something weird in there. I couldn't get the fruit in it. So no, this is just going to be a bud vase or something. So there's details, cleaning up the throwing lines, shape a little bit. Now, I'm going to use my red rubber rib and I'm bending it so it conforms to that shape. I'm trying to keep and I'm putting placing it on there just enough that it is kind of scraping the slip I'm cleaning those lines but I'm not really you know altering it or pressing really hard because I don't want to change the shape very much sometimes you'll drag sand or grog that's in your clay even with this red rubber rib. So I'll do all of this and then I'll take the finishing sponge and onto it again.
Okay, I'm also going to cut the bottom and try to get it to come in a little bit because I'm not going to trim it. I'm going to do as much of that work now as I can. Actually, with that kind of um, flared out foot down there, it almost looks like one of those genie bottles or something, maybe. I'm just going to bring it in anyway. So I'm just using this guy again. He's small and pointy, so he's good at getting these details underneath here. I'm following the shape, that line that I've already created on the exterior of the form and just following it down underneath until I touch the bat to create that continuous that continuous line um, silhouette and there's going to be a lot of boogies down here because you know the clay's still wet I just finished throwing it Stuff's gonna stick back onto it. Actually, I think there might be a, for an object, which is usual in our recycled clay. Foreign materials are often found in there. So now I cleaned that up. I like the way that goes in like that. So I'm just gonna take my finishing sponge. Where is it? It's all the way over there. My finishing sponge is all the way over there, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my regular sponge. Oh, there's a lot of water in there. And I'm going to clean it up. And it's okay if it's not perfect, because when you glaze it, a lot of these very fine lines will get covered up anyways. Do one more pass. Now, if I, did the, if I was doing this with my finishing sponge, it wouldn't leave such pronounced lines on the outside, which is why I like it. You can get the same effect. A lot of people use like little pieces of squeegee, uh, not squeegee, um, what do you call that stuff? Chamois. Little pieces of chamois that you dry your car off with. Um, a lot of people use those. I can't really get down. My sponge is too big to get down here. There we go. Good enough for me. Now, if you did this and you're like, this is super boring, it's just straight up and down, you know, the curve is nice, but like, well, it's boring. Maybe I want to separate parts of this with some lines or something. So maybe I'll take um, the other side, the rounded side of this tool. And because this is a very um, rounded, bulbousy shape. I'm I'm gonna try. I'm gonna make my line squiggly instead of just straight across. I mean, either would look but look nice, but I kind of like the. So I'm gonna do it right about here, where it transitions. I think from the body to the neck. And if you vary your the speed at which you move your tool, you can get different lines in it at different positions um, and it's not just the same squiggle. You know, if I do this, you know, I'm getting all these cool variations. If you speed the wheel up, you can get variation. You know, and then you've got something with a little bit more flair to it, a little something, a little something, something extra. Maybe I'll also mirror it here and do some squiggles on the rim there. I don't know what's that going to look like. 
Well, that's fun. All right, I think I'm done with that. So there's your Tuesday evening pottery demo. Uh, one of these days, I think Chris and I were talking about doing a Facebook Live uh, for one of these virtual classes. I don't know how it works. And uh, I don't know if it'll be good or not, so we'll try it. If it's terrible, uh, we won't do it again, but... Oh yeah, I never even showed you guys how to use this thing. If I were gonna try... <laughs> if I wanted to belly this anymore, I would take this and go from the inside. And I'll, I'll do it just to show you. Now if I do this, I'm also gonna kind of stretch out the neck. Um, I don't want to do that, but what you do is just carefully and always with two hands on your tools, you're gonna go in and you would just kind of take this and run it up the side to belly it out more. You know, the more pressure you put, the more it's gonna belly, the less, you know, the less it's gonna belly. So that's what that tool would do. But I like, I like the neck the way it is. So if I did that, I would kind of push it out so that it was more like this shape here. And I don't want that. So uh, yeah, I hope everybody's staying calm and safe and inspired at home. And we'll be posting more videos. So uh, you guys have a wonderful evening.